Hey, Planeswalkers Mithras here. Hope you're doing well and staying safe. Today, I got a best of three tier list coming your way. So I'm pretty pumped about this. We did the best of one already, so you guys can go check that one out. Today, we'll be doing best of three, similar to the best of one. We've done a short list. Now, obviously there are differences. Uh, I get a lot of feedback around these, what should be tier one, two, th and three, and so forth. I think many surprises from you from a tier one perspective with, uh, with best of one. So keep at it, my friends. Um, I'm going to I agree and disagree and listen to the feedback and I love the discussion as always. So that's part of this. Now, today's list is also going to be a shorter list. Uh, we're running about similar 12 decks. Um, I do plan to do another cut. However, two things. I want to get this list in your hands today because I do have a feeling based off the weekend events that we're going to face a potential ban. At least that's some of the rumor mill going on um, So and speculation. So I do want to get this in your hand uh, because that. And second, uh, this will prepare you either way if the bannings do happen or don't to be well positioned uh, within the meta. And I say after banning, uh, any deck that does not face some sort of card that gets banned, usually those ones based off the current meta tend to kind of push towards the top. So hang on tight. We're going to go check out that list here in, in a second. Now, quickly, for those of you that are new, what is a tier list? So a tier list is a priority stack ranking. So one of the things that I've done in mind is the first one that you'll see going down the list. Uh, I do have them all up and shown for you here in a little bit. Um, that will be the best one in the list. And then also in the list that I provide, the top one going down is also going to be the best that list. So that's a new take. They're not, don't look at them as being equal. Look at some of those within those tiers being slightly better than the other ones. And then additionally, within the collective universe, I'll just say within the model of the tier that we have, um, these are how you want to stack rig those decks against those decks as well. So those are a couple things. Now, if you see something missing or something that you would like to see, please drop me a note or a comment down below. Would love to include that in the future. Um, so keep that in mind. Again, this is a short one, and then we'll take a look at, at the bigger list here later in the season. Um, and then additionally, if bannings do happen, things do shift, and we'll get to that as well. So a couple of things, Planeswalkers, here before we go check out the list. I do want to cover off on some key observations, as always. We'll walk through the list here shortly as well. And then on top of that, uh, I do want to do a quick deep dive or high level dive into each of those decks for you. Obviously, you'll have access to each of them here, but hold on tight for a second. So Planeswalkers, before we go check out this deck list, as always, I just want to say thank you. I really, really appreciate your support. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel down over there. Additionally, if you do like this video, please like it. You can also like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Twitch to stay up to date on content like this, top decks, tier lists, all that fun jazz. Additionally, I'm going to probably start including more uh, new joiner type content as well for those because I've been getting a ton of deck building questions and I love it. So keep sending it my way here to help as always Planeswalkers. All right. So we're going to go ahead now and take a look at the tier list. I've been holding you here hostage for a little bit. Uh, so before and without further ado, the tier list and for your notes, as always, it is down below for you in the description. So you have access to it right away. You guys can go ahead and take a look at it. And we're going to go look at it right now. All right, here we go, Planeswalkers. And here's what we got going on. So this tier list, again, is a culmination of work that we've done over the last couple of weeks. Additionally, when we talk about observations and trends, this is a concurrent time trend snapshot and experience going back from uh, month over month and set over set and ban over ban kind of a thing. So I love covering those things and I do consider best of one and best of three different and we have to look at it in that way too. So here's the list. Here's what we got going on. Probably to no surprise, we see tier one, four color Omnath. Um, this is of everyone again, as always, either you love it or hate it kind of a thing right now. The unfortunate or fortunate piece in terms of the meta, I will call it a uh, consolidation. So many, many players are playing this right now in the 2020 Grand Finals right now. We have probably 60 plus percent of the players playing this type of a deck. And when I last checked, I know we got 
almost to the final match. Um, so all those decks are also Omnath decks. So quick call out here though, before we go and check out the tier two decks, uh, there was a Gruul Adventures deck in there as well. I did not get a chance to build that for you. Stay tuned and obviously keep in touch because that one's coming soon. Um, I'm gonna take a look at either Emma's or uh, Autumn's deck. Very, very great, really, really like them, and they put up a good show in making the top eight as well, so quick shout out to those two. All right, so next in tier two, we got Demir Rogues, um, our friend and boy uh, that did a great, great job here uh, in the last in the last run, um, did end up not going as far here, Seth Manfield, even with his historic, historic run. Um, he did make it into the top eight with Demir Rogue, so congratulations. I think this is well-placed, again, within where we're at in the meta. Additionally, coming out of, again, what I was just talking about, post-ban potential here, because of the field consolidation in, in the meta, I think this one's gonna be really well-positioned. Next, we have Teamer Adventure, so Aaron Gertler, Congratulations for making the finals. Again, I, I'm recording this before that's gone down. Uh, this used to be your deck here. We've seen that you've moved towards a uh, four color adventure type deck. So congratulations uh, being known as the Teamer Adventure, Teamer Clover, Lucky Clover, dude. So um, that's a great, great spot there. Next, some newcomers. We've seen Mono White Aggro really, really making a push. So this is coming off the back of um, that lovely Red Bull untapped tournament in France. We've seen a huge push. It's done a great, great job in the meta. Next, we have Mono Green. So Mono Green has done very well. It was hot off the press really early on, has really shown well, kind of fallen back in that middle of the pack here again at the tier two. Next, we have Rakdos Midrange. So Rakdos, and let me move my face here. Um, so Rakdos has done a great job, again, coming out of that Red Bull tournament. That was another one. Um, Get in a nice position there right in tier two. Again, in tier two, we have a Boros. Now your cycling, I like to call it, because we do have access to those other two colors, uh, blue and black, to make it your, and instead of Boros. And that's coming nice again based off the modal land. So good access to more things, good access to a different sideboard and those kinds of pieces as well. Next, I have Esper Doom. So I think this one's kind of a floater, tier two, tier three. I put it in tier two because I really, really do like the deck. Um, I think over the long run of a match, uh, it, as long as you keep getting things down, I think it's very powerful, just like any deck, obviously, once it stabilizes. Um, but it has a lot, a lot of potential. I think we should keep an eye on this one. Next, tier three, we have Mono Red Aggro. So this really broke my heart <laughs> to move it from a tier one to tier three, especially for best of one to best of three. But I do feel right now, um, given the competition, Mono Red Aggro is, is in a bad spot when it comes to best of three, unfortunately. I think there's just too much you can side in um, to really, really hold it at bay. Next, a tier three, we have Is It Tempo? So this is a general generic Is It Spells deck. Um, I Again, this one just has not, for some reason, been able to pull out a ton of juice here. Um, I, I think it's kind of fallen back a little bit uh, based in where things are in the meta today. Next, we have Selesnya Counter. So again, I really like this deck. Um, I do think that within the meta, uh, it can it can struggle at times, even though it really, really builds a board presence pretty fast. Just some of the other things tend to be a little bit quicker here um, and have a good enough answer to, to the counter stacks, unfortunately, or fortunately. Um, then next we have tier three Jeskai spells. Um, so this one in particular just has not shown well uh, within the current meta. I think there is some optimization still that could happen. And if there is a ban, uh, I think there might be room to grow with, with the Jeskai spells. Particularly, again, the uh, modal lands offer us a lot, especially within that within that combination. So let's keep a lookout for that. But I do feel that's a good, good spot for that one as well. All right, now quick shout out once again, like I said, on the Gruel Adventures deck here by Emma and um, Autumn. I feel that this deck is definitely well positioned in the meta. I do want to talk about it quickly. Um, and obviously feel free to subscribe to the channel uh, and, and stay up to date on uh, Twitter and Twitch and um, Facebook as well, because I do plan to do this one next. I'm very excited about it, again, as it being a top eight. And it's been on my list for a while. So uh, stay tuned. 
Now, additionally, if you do see something on this list, as I mentioned, please feel free to let me know. Would love to potentially take a look and cover it. Um, as always, I'm always looking to grow that list and uh, play new, fun, exciting, different content because that's what I love doing. And especially if it's a top deck, uh, 1500, Mythic, all that, I love doing that as well. Um, all right, Planeswalkers, so quickly here, before we do the deep dives, I do want to cover off on some big trends here that I think are particular uh, to pay attention to in this point in time and then where we've came from. Obviously, we've had the great rotation, as I like to call it here, um, with Standard getting the big shift and then Zendikar rising as well. So a couple of key pointers, as I've already mentioned, we have a consolidation at the top. Uh, again, a lot of the T1 four color Omnath adventure pieces, but there's two key components that are really different uh, from the last standard and the last meta snapshot that we had. I think the last one I did was either in August or early September. Um, two things, we got Fall of the Saltai. So obviously Saltai has not done a good enough job. We've covered some of those um, early on, but some of the changes with Euro have really hurt it as well. So that's a key piece. There may be space for that uh, to come back. I don't know, but let's keep an eye on it. Uh, the Saltai, if you remember, uh, there was a ton of ramp and Saltai was the one that came through in the end uh, after the post bannings and really made a good spot. The other thing that we've lost is the sacrifice decks. So Luris, like Omnath right now, many of you are going to say is in a tier of its own, tier zero, all that stuff, but I did put it by itself in tier one. Um, Luris. Uh, was in a similar position with the sack decks. We saw a lot of changes. We saw the bannings and kind of similar path. And that was what I'll say a deterioration uh, for that deck probably over the course of one, two, three months. So if we use any examples, again, with the speculation, like I said, I'm willing to make a, make a speculation in terms of the kind of a similar path with Omnath. Wizards needs to keep the meta fresh for us, especially in standard for us to keep playing and coming back to the well and having fun. Plus, a lot of us in today's world really, really enjoy that. Additionally, due to the digital platform that we have known as Arena and also I would I, MTGO, I just like to call out as well because I know that's still a lot of players still in that space. Um, this gives us a good opportunity to really play a lot of matches really, really fast. And then additionally, with all the information sharing, just like this channel, um, you, you get access to things pretty quickly and pretty real time and make it, make adjustments uh, in, in, in live. So next, I also want to talk about some juiced archetypes coming in from uh, ZNR. So what this is, is these are things like the Dimir Rogues. This is the things like the Rakdos Midrange. Um, we have begun to see, and additionally, you could kind of talk about Omnath being the same way, but we've seen this divergence from the monocolored decks. Now, don't get me wrong. We still have mono white aggro, mono green, uh, mono red in here. They're not as strong as they used to be. I will say, I think mono white's done a nice job uh, in in the pre or, uh, in the last few weeks, or at least last week, week and a half, uh, two weeks. And um, at the same time, we see things like Dimir Rogues consistently probably holding towards the top, and then also this kind of rise, the Rakdos mid-range. So I think that's pretty important. Uh, if we look at the trends over the last few months, um, the monocolored decks were fairly strong and slowly, slowly kind of lost that positioning. Next, um, I will also say the strength in mana numbers, so similar story. Um, and the other piece that I want to say, in I take that take that back. That one was strength in number. The juiced archetypes are actually uh, adventure and cycling. So these were things that we went and took a look at um, during the interim with with that standard we had uh cycling doing really well we had team adventures doing really well and now i call it juice because you got access with omnath and four color adventure and then additionally the your cycling so that's that's a, a big piece lastly the one thing as always that i was talking about is post your ban to be continued this is very important i do think things will continue to change i think based off of again 2020 season grand finals um, and what we saw within the meta, I think things are going to be ripe for a change. And the best way to do that is for uh, uh, wizards uh, to make a change in banned list or restricted list um, to, in my opinion, keep it healthy. I, I don't think 
me in particular, and I'm sure many of you in the community like to see everyone kind of playing the same deck. Uh, and when we go to tournaments and see those things like that within a meta, um, it, it is what it is. But again, um, I, I like the change. I'm also kind of the anti always tier one kind of deck, unless it's my archetype that I enjoy. Um, but with that said, I always try and go against the grain and do something a little bit different. So keep your keep your eyes open. I think that could be a chance. Um, and then as I mentioned, anything that doesn't face ban, post ban within this list is gonna be well positioned and make sure to pick that up right away because as people kind of try and sift through and figure things out, that's gonna be a good shot and rise to the top. All right, Planeswalkers, let me know if you have any questions about that. Please feel free to ask down below. Always happy to help uh, and give you some give you some pointers. And as always, th this list is down below. All the deck lists are down below. Uh, my website also has them all in a consolidated spot that you guys can absolutely, absolutely go check out if you'd like. Um, next, uh, a couple other things. Uh, so we talked about the tier list and what it was. Um, we've now looked at the tier list and then we've also talked through the observations. Sorry, I'm going to do my points there. Um, finally, here and last, I will go through the decks at a high level uh, so that you have an idea of what they are and kind of how they're positioned um, and learn a little bit about those two, whether it's your first time or if you've seen them already, uh, maybe you'll learn something new from me. So. With that said, Planeswalkers, let's go ahead and jump into that. Uh, but before we do, just want to say again, thank you. I appreciate your support. Uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel down down over there. Additionally, if you like the video so far or do like it, please like it. Now you can like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Twitch. Stay up to date on content like this. All right. So first off, we got our lovely Omnath four color deck. So this one facing the uh, the Euro ban, um, Euro did not necessarily tear it apart too much. We got two big powerful things smashed together, as I like to say. We got Adventures or Clover and Omnath making our four color. Um, so here's what we got going on in this deck. Again, key components being Adventure. We got Draw, we got Clover, we've got access to Cyborg, and then we got our lovely Omnath. Now, if we do look particularly at this deck, speculation has it that any these could be three key things that could be facing potential bannings so obviously omnath we have lucky clover that would that would really wreck this as well um bone crusher was played like as mentioned earlier in like 90 percent of the decks um and then we mentioned omnath and then probably escapes the wilds now the other one in the ramp decks is also cobra i do feel based off what i saw from the grand finals I, I think it's going to be more apt to keep Cobra, potentially dropping Escape to the Wilds, um, or or Clover. Those two would would do enough to really really do two things: Rune Clover or Team or Clover or Adventure decks, and then also really really uh, take take this down. Again, speculation here. If that's what happens, they leave Clover. I have a high high likelihood feeling that. Um, we're going to start to see some generic ramp decks again, and we're going to see Ugin back in the match. So you heard it first from me. That's my spec bet there, um, but we'll see. <laughs> All right. I think that's good enough. And again, sideboard for you. If you got questions, comments, we'll go, we'll go from there. All right. Dimir Rogue. So this has been a top performer consistently, uh, as mentioned. So keep an eye out here. Um, I think there's a lot of cool things that are going to happen. This one's a little bit different. I'm not running... Our, our lovely uh, flash guy with the ping. Um, it's got Zareth here as well. So for those, uh, Dimir again is the blue black, rogues is the main mechanic here. Uh, the whole point is milling and also making your rogue stronger over time. Uh, you got a lot of juice with counter as well as uh, direct death with things like drown and lock. Um, Here's a sideboard for you as well. So you have access to that obviously uh, for the best of three piece. And I'm not going to go into how to uh, sideboard everything. You guys can absolutely go take a look at all the other videos. Um, that will give you a better idea. So here's the traditional teamer clover. Uh, so we're not running four ofs. Uh, a couple of differences here. This particular one runs one of, of one mind. I think this is actually Gertler's. Uh, if I recall, you'd have to, I'd have to go back and look at that video, but I do, I, I know I've covered Gertler two or three times already, so uh, it's cool to see him in the finals, uh, particularly, uh, again, 
kind of following him, uh, you know, the last few months and really, really performing well. And I remember him uh, hitting number one again with, with the Clover deck. So that's pretty neat. Here's the sideboard as well. There's that Ugin. I'm telling you, keep an eye on that. Uh, next, Mono White Aggro. So this thing, like I've said, has made a huge impact recently. Uh, here's what we got going on. And it is very, very quick. So it does a great job of removing creatures. It does a great job of keeping your creatures on the board and as well as dodging things with things like Shepherd of the Flock. Here's the sideboard for you. Um, again, quickly here, Containment Priest. For those of you that don't know, I do want to carve this because I did make the mistake. It's if a non-token creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast, exile it instead. So it's not not tokens, like I said. If it's things like Fiend going to find something, it wasn't cast. This you flash this in, it's gonna shut that down. As an example. Alright. Next we got mono green. So mono green stompy has been very, very powerful. Now, for a long time, I think it's always a, something consistent, kind of similar like Mono Red. Um, in particular, though, it does a great job in, in Best of Three, whether it's whether it's the um, Best of One or Best of Three. I think there's a lot of pieces here. I think this particular one, again, was by Rumpty. If I recall, you guys could go take a look. Rumpty did hit number one with this deck as well and always makes a big popular push for, for Mono Green. Next, we have Rakdos Midrange. Um, so this one was a, a deck coming out of the Red Bull France tournament uh, qualifier. It was hit number one, great, great impact on the meta. We've seen a, a big, big rise in this deck, which is very, very important and pretty interesting. And also, I always think healthy for the meta as well. All right. Next, we have Boros Your Cycling. So similar thing with the the Rakdos mid-range deck. We now have access to some more colors, uh, in particular the blue and the black through the modal lands here. Um, and the key to the playing this deck is if you do get these, you're just gonna drop the two blue and that gives you access to Boon, Wish, Boon of the Wish Giver as well as this if you want, but really this one's what you're looking for so you get don't necessarily run out of juice. It is expensive, um, but if you get there and you're not getting anything, at least you have that option. Again, the sideboards here, uh, pretty interesting and things to keep in mind as well. All right, next we have Esper Doom. So T2 still. Um, I really, really enjoy this deck. Um, a couple call-its here, Confounding Conundrum. Uh, you can replace this with the Artifact Egg if you want for the life, uh, but this does slow down some of the ramp decks, so you can keep that in mind. Additionally, uh, you still get to draw a card, so it's pretty healthy in terms of bringing things back from the graveyard with the pieces like Dance of the Mance here as well. And then it revolves around this particular card, Doom Foretold. Very, very strong deck, and once it gets stabilized, it gets more towards that late game. It's really, really hard to come back. Uh, now moving into T3, we got four more decks to go. Uh, mono Red. So as I said, I was pretty disheartened by moving this one here, but I do feel uh, this particular one um, just does not quite make it. Uh, it is it is pretty quick. Um, I know I do get questions on, well, why, why if it's so good at best of one, why is it not as good as best of three? Well, the reality is the, the smoothing curve help, helps but also the three matches, I think, over time also can even up the decks. In particular, there's a lot more things that can hurt this deck, I feel like, than can hurt some of the other decks in, in early and late game kind of a thing. Um, and then again, the sideboard here. Next, we got Is It Tempo? So I really, really like this deck. I think there's a good spot for it still. Um, just gotta kind of figure out what that may look like or what it, what, what it could entail. Um, lots of good quick things and, and good sideboard cards though, uh, to boot. All right, Selesnia Counters. I would still keep an eye on this deck. I think there's room for it. Um, it may get better here over time as things kind of shift or um, certain things get tweaked as well, but I do, do really enjoy playing this one. And it has access to Gem Razor, just like the Mono Green. I think that's one of the most powerful cards in the format. Additionally, against the Adventure decks, it makes a big, big difference. Uh, lastly here, Jeskai Spells. 
so the big piece with this one, I think, again, as I mentioned, there's some room for improvement. I think Seagate's amazing. Um, I, uh, I think the key here is you do get access to Vadrock with white. Um, I think this could be tweaked a little bit for improvement, but again, this was a top deck. Um, and so hats off there as always. All right, and then again, as I said, the uh, the fun call here, Grill Adventures, will absolutely cover that um, in the in the next day or so. All right, Planeswalkers, that is our list for you today. Uh, if you got questions or comments, please let me know down below. If you disagree with something, let me know. I like to discuss and like to get your point of view. Additionally, if there is a card or, or sorry, a deck uh, that you would like me to showcase, please let me know. Uh, I'm a big fan of that as always. I know I've heard Dimmer Mill, I've heard Dimmer Control. So those are on my list. I got the Gruel Adventures one on my list. Um, lots of things coming your way, so stay tuned. Now, with that said, as always, Planeswalkers, I truly, truly appreciate your support. Um, it, it, it makes my day always. And please feel free to subscribe to the channel down over there. Additionally, if you like the video, please like it. You can also like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Twitch to stay up to date on content like this. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the best of three uh, tier list here that I have for you today. Again, it is, I think, 12 decks. Uh, planning to expand that with the next take and we'll continue to see this lively and healthy, hopefully meta, uh, continue to evolve. As always, I really, really enjoy that. Uh, particularly as a player, I, that bug drives me nuts. It is the little blue guy with the big eye and blanking on his name. But yes, if you caught that, you can stop it. You'll probably see it. Um, anyway, it drives me crazy while I'm playing. Anyway, with that distraction now behind me, <laughs> I, 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 I hope I was able to explain, you know, kind of what a tier list is for those of you that are new. Um, talk through some of the trends over time here when it came to best of three with the differences and loss of kind of the salt eye change-ups and the sacrifice some of the posterior pieces um, so lots and lots of good good things and, and pieces that we always have to remember Omnath was like the Lurus two three months ago so it's just an ever-evolving thing within the format now uh, you either jump on the ship or you don't and uh, that is it is what it is and then again Lastly, we did a quick uh, high-level overview of each of the decks. Again, deck lists down below, you'll have access to it right away. Tier list down below, you'll have access to it right away. Um, you can go to my website and you'll get everything in one spot too if you'd like. So Planeswalkers, you stay safe, stay tuned. I'm always looking forward to bringing you new content, things like this. And as I mentioned, probably going to start doing a special uh, series or something like that for just particular new joiners because I, I, I've been seeing a lot of those uh, and welcome to the community. As always, it's a great place. Um, I've been playing Magic for a very, very long time uh, and I'm, I'm thankful to have it as a, as a part of my life as well. So, all right. Planeswalkers, enough said. Mithras out. We'll see you soon. Stay safe. Take care. Until next time.